then there was the step of actual engulfment right and after that phagosome formation i had said that there is this protein list protein which was very much required for the phagolysosome formation now finally it is time to talk a little bit about this protein and see what problems the deficiency of this can actually cause so this list protein lysosomal transporter protein this is actually required for transporting the lys uh, the phagosome rather towards the lysosome within the obviously white blood cell and their fusion causing phagolysosome formation then after the phagolysosome formation the array of steps they can actually proceed and subsequently inflammation can take place but if there is a defect in this list protein there is a very characteristic and very famous disease or rather syndrome syndrome because obviously it is genetic and that is something that we call shiriak higashi syndrome okay so shiriak higashi syndrome this is you've probably heard of this from biochemistry in biochemistry also uh, under molecular targeting systems we had i mean not in this channel but it's actually something that is talked about in biochemistry as well shiriak higashi syndrome in the first chapter of biochemistry that is cells so shiriak higashi syndrome that is actually a molecular targeting mechanism defect here what's happening is as i have already mentioned there is a defect defect in what defect in the yes the list protein lysosomal transporter protein which would mean now obviously uh, you can join the ends here and see what this means what the implications of this would be this would mean that there would be obviously defective inflammation and defective inflammatory response defective immunological response as well because as i have already said and this is for the umpteenth time i'm saying this that inflammation is a defense mechanism our body is trying to rid itself of all those different problems but that's not all you see list protein has been found to be very important not only for the inflammation process it is also very much needed in some other cells as well for example it is very much needed in melanocytes it is let's first draw these yeah very much needed in um platelets it is very much needed for our neural tissue and obviously it is very much needed for our neutrophils as well that is obvious that's what the entire discussion was about so now if there is a defect in list protein all of these will be affected <clears throat> right all of these will be affected so what will be the clinical picture in shiriak higashi syndrome defects in these individual components so in you might say shiriak higashi what will be the clinical picture the clinical manifestations number 1 defect in melanocytes so obviously couldn't have been more obvious let's go with red albinism you are having problems in melanocytes so albinism that is complete loss of pigmentation from skin so albinism obviously means complete loss of pigmentation from skin as well as from hair so albinism would obviously also mean that the person would have golden hair okay and completely white skin like depigmented skin okay then obviously let's move on what is the next cell which has it platelets 
So defect in platelet function would mean that there is increased chances of hemorrhage. Increased hemorrhage because of platelet functions. The third one. What is the third one? Neural. Neural tissue. So obviously neurological manifestations. Neurological manifestations. And last but obviously not the least, neutrophil problems. So problems in the defense mechanisms in our body. So very high chances of infections. So these are more or less the external clinical manifestations that are seen in Shiryakigashi syndrome. But Shiryakigashi syndrome, there is actually something that you need to understand as far as the cytological study is concerned as well. So these four points that I have just mentioned, they are the external clinical manifestations, right? But suppose you order a blood test for a patient suffering from Shiryakigashi Shiryaki syndrome. What would you see in the peripheral smear? That is also a little characteristic as far as the findings are concerned. So in the blood peripheral smear, blood peripheral smear findings, what is found is that within the WBCs, the cytoplasm of the WBCs, suppose uh, I don't have it or maybe I do. Let's go with blue. Suppose these are the granules or these are the bilobed or trilobed nucleus, whatever. Okay. And within the cytoplasm, it has been seen that there have been a lot of giant granules that are found. Okay. A lot of, let's go with green, giant granules. Okay. That are found in the WBCs of patients suffering from Shiryakigashi syndrome. So these giant granules what are they yes they are the phagolysosomes or not the phagolysosome is it the phagolysosome no it cannot be the phagolysosome because there is failure of fusion in shiryakigashi syndrome so it cannot be the phagolysosome itself but the phagosomes so these are the persistent you might say phagosomes which obviously could not be dealt with, the contents of which could not be digested due to the defective molecular targeting system leading to phagolysosome absence or defect in phagolysosome formation due to defect in list protein. Okay, So these giant granules are the persistent phagosomes which remain in the cytoplasm because engulfment has occurred but subsequent steps cannot take place. So this is all about Shiryakigashi syndrome. So combining these clinical findings and the peripheral smear cytology finding, you can easily diagnose a patient to be having Shiryakigashi syndrome.